What's going on, everyone? And welcome back. This is going to be a gold sponsor session here. And uh, I'm here with my good friend, Joe Serio, the 360 degree dispatcher. Thank you guys very much for being a gold sponsor. Again, this is a gold sponsor session. And Joe is going to be doing a session called recruitment and retention through storytelling. Take it away, my friend. Thank you, Ricardo. First question I have for you is what is Star Wars about? I ask this question in classes and at conferences, and people tell me, right? They tell me about this kid, about his sister, sister, not sister, father, you're my father, kill my father, all these things, right? We know the plot to Star Wars. And then I ask them again, what is Star Wars about? And they look at me a little funny, and they, they tell me the same thing. They tell me about the plot. So yes, but what is Star Wars about? So without belaboring the point, let me just tell you. Star Wars is about you. Star Wars is about you. You are Luke Skywalker. You are on a journey. It's called the hero's journey. And you're trying to figure out who you are you're trying to grow up, trying to become an adult. You're dealing with your parent issues. You have a guide that shows up, Obi-Wan Kenobi, shows up to show you the way, right? This is what happens in life. This is the story. This is the archetypal story of our journeys. We're all going through it. This is one of the main reasons why Star Wars was so popular. And this is one of the main reasons why Hollywood makes billions of dollars because they tapped into the hero's journey. They tapped into the formula for storytelling. Storytelling has been around for hundreds of thousands of years. It's been used since the first time people started socializing and civilizing. Just picture the old master the wise man around the fire, transmitting knowledge and information to younger generations. And generation after generation tells those stories. Okay? The stories are about you. So one thing I don't like to do when I'm doing presentations is a lot of words on a PowerPoint, but I'm going to give you a couple of lists, and then we'll talk from there about these lists. And the one list is seven questions that audiences want to know. Who are you? I want to know, who is this Luke Skywalker? Do you know who I am? Do you get me? Are you an expert? Can you solve my problem? Do you have a plan for solving the problem? Can I trust you? Can you deliver? Are you going to do what you say? Do I like you? Look at that list again. Who are you? Do you get me? Are you an expert? Can you solve my problem? Do you have a plan for solving my problem? Can I trust you? Can you deliver? Are you going to do what you say? And do I like you? Do you know who the audience is in this case? The audience is the person applying for a job at your comm center. When you publicize a position, when you conduct uh, hire, hiring and do interviews, you have to understand the position of the person you're talking to. And the position of the person you're talking to is this. They are sitting there wondering, who are you? Do you understand where I'm coming from? Do you have your act together? Do you, Com Center ABC, do you have your act together? Is it worth my time to go work for you? All too often, employers have the act, absolute exact opposite reaction, right? They say, well, they're going to feel lucky to come work for us. And we're going to scrutinize them and see if they're worthy to work for us. Wait a second. 
are you worthy for me to want to work for? Because whether they know it or not, the applicants are thinking that. They want to know, did they treat me well in the interview process? Did I like them? Are they going to help me solve my problem of finding a place that's healthy and supportive and a place where I want to live? Right? That's what work is. You're at work 8, 10, 12, 16 hours a day. I'm living there. That is my home away from home. And oftentimes, I will spend more time with there than I will with my own family. So I want to know, are you people worth my time? Are you people worth my employment? And the second list I want to give you is this. Five pillars of a great story. A hero we care about. You can think about movies that you like. Think about that hero. You know that if you had a hero you didn't like, that you were turned off. A goal for the hero. Think about the Indiana Jones movies. Obstacles the hero must face. A clear resolution and transformation. What does that mean? It means the hero is not the same person at the end as he or she were at the beginning. They go through a process of dealing with the obstacles, of dealing with the struggles, and they come out the other end a changed person. They grew a little. They learned about themselves a little. They figured out who they are as a person a little bit more, a little bit better. And we have to tell that story of the hero. So let me throw this out at you. The hero is also the person applying for a position in your comm center. Do you care about the people applying? You better care about them, and you better show them from day one, from the time that they apply for a job at your place. Why? Because they are the hero, not you. The applicant is the hero. They don't really care about who you are. They care about getting what they need. And if you can't deliver to the hero the circumstances and the framework in which that hero can transform, that hero can become better than he or she were before, then they will not stay. They will not stay. A hero we care about. A goal for that hero. What is the goal for the hero? The goal for the hero is to be properly onboarded, to be properly trained, to be able to show that hero that regardless of their fear and their nerves, that they are capable of so much more than they believe at that moment. Why? Because that hero, when they go into training, is freaking out. Why? Because of number three, obstacles the hero must face. The hero is learning something new in a group of people that are new, with technology that is new, in circumstances that are new. We frequently forget that the hero, the trainee, is in a very difficult position. And we may have an attitude like, suck it up, buttercup. Just do what you're told. You can't cultivate a hero that way. You can't create the transition, the transformation from living in fear to living courageously, from being afraid of the job to stepping into their, their greatness the job of a comm center is to find a hero and help them to step into their greatness. You are Han Solo. You are Princess Leia. You are Obi-Wan Kenobi. Your job is to help Luke Skywalker grow 
so that he can face things that he never believed he could face before. So that your hero, your trainee, can save somebody's life. That your hero, your trainee, can be effectively integrated into the fabric of your comm center. That's what's happening here. Most comm centers I deal with don't know that. That's what's happening. And one of the questions that I have for you is, do you have a story? Do you have a story about your comm center that you can impart to the applicant that's going to light up those parts of his or her brain where they say, oh, my God, this is my tribe. These are my people. This is a group that's going to help me get what I want. And a lot of comm centers may be saying, we don't care what the, what the trainee wants. They're here to serve us. And the fact of the matter is that the comm center is there to serve their heroes. Supervisors are there to serve dispatchers. Directors are there to serve dispatchers and supervisors. That's what's happening. And the reason most places get it wrong is because they have the order flipped. And the attitude is, you're here to serve me. You, dispatcher, are here to serve me, the supervisor. And in most cases, dispatch supervisors are freaking out. And they're stressed, and they're afraid, and they don't know all the answers, and they don't know how to interact with people effectively because they weren't really trained. There's not a lot of effective supervisor training. So they've got their own fear that's clashing with the fear of the hero, of the trainee. They don't know how to talk. Trainers often don't know how to talk to the trainees. What do you think is going to happen? What is it you think is going to happen? Why is it that newly employed dispatchers leave after six months? Obviously, there are a lot of reasons. One of the reasons is that they get pushed out. They get pushed out. How's that? If you hire a dispatcher... And you or the captain or lieutenant or whoever's overseeing the thing says, I don't want to know your name until you've been here six months. I hear that all over the country. Why is it you think that person would want to stay? The story you told that person is, we don't care that you're here. We don't value you. Let's just see if you're strong enough to make it. But I don't really care about you until you've proven something to me. You're telling the story. That's the story you're telling. It's a horrible story. I'm not saying to the end of that movie, I, as the hero, as a trainee, I will go work somewhere else. Why is it that dispatchers move from one comm center to another and take a pay cut? Because they know the story in the other place is better than the story they're being told in their place. What is the story that you're telling your heroes? Most comm centers, for that matter, most organizations, most companies, don't think in terms of storytelling. But think about this. We will go to the movies and sit still for two hours, which everyone thinks is unheard of. No one has attention span anymore. Yes, they do. If they can binge a Netflix show for eight hours straight, people have attention spans. The question is, are you giving them anything worthy of their attention? And your reaction may be, they can just suck it up. I'm not here to entertain them. They just got to do what they're told. 
and like it, and they will leave. And by the way, if I applied for a job and that's the way people talk to me, I would leave also. We're dealing with human beings who have desires and needs and wants and emotions and history and fear. And they want to know that they have a team around them. When they hit number three and they have all these obstacles and hurdles, they want Han Solo with them. They want Princess Leia with them to give them support, to give them material support, to give them moral support, to give them emotional support. So that when the shit hits the fan and it's going to, they know they're part of a tribe. They know they're part of a bigger story, a story that's bigger than themselves. They also know that as the hero of that story, they're going to be able to fulfill dreams that they never thought were possible. What is the story of your comm center? Stories that you can tell are autobiographical. You can talk about a satisfied customer. You can talk about the mentors, the mentor story. Right? Autobiographical story. When you tell your story, it's not for the purpose of telling that person how great you are. It's for the purpose of convincing that other person that they can do it too. When you tell a satisfied customer story, you are training, you are nurturing the dispatcher to see what's possible and how to create a satisfied customer. That you know that you have a plan and you convey that plan in the story to your trainees, to your dispatchers. If you're a supervisor, you tell stories. Why? Because those stories are giving your heroes hope that the challenge is worth it, that the Obstacles are not insurmountable, that they can rise to the level of your greatness. And more importantly, they can rise to the level of the greatness that they have inside themselves. Whether they realize that greatness or not, Luke Skywalker did not know he had greatness inside of him at the beginning of the first movie. And also tell a mentor story. Something to give other people hope and inspiration. Tell your story. What is the story of transformation of someone in your comm center? Somebody that's been there for five years, 10 years, 20 years. Are you telling those stories in your interview process? Are you using those stories to illustrate who you are as a group? That you have each other's backs? That you help each other to transform? I want to be part of that group, but I do not want to be part of the group that says, don't tell us what your name is until you've been here six months. When you get a new person on board, what should you be doing? You should be celebrating as much as possible. Celebrating as much as possible. Throw them a party, give them a cake, give them a gift card, whatever. Because you're saying, we, you are now one of us. We are glad to have you. We are celebrating your arrival. Another part of the story. What do you think is going to happen five years later? The trainee now is a tra is, now is a a dispatcher or a supervisor, and then they turn back around and say, oh, I remember how it felt. When I arrived, they threw me a party. So let's make sure we throw a party for this new trainee. And before you know it, you're developing history. You're developing ritual. You're developing habits. You're living your legacy. You have a story to tell. Everybody here has a story to tell. Your comm centers have a story to tell.
time to tell that story. So here's the basic outline. Right there it is. Once upon a time, every day, until one day, and because of that, and because of that, until finally, and ever since then, right? Once upon a time, we had a senior dispatcher. She had been there for 25 years. And every day for the last 10 years, she never said good morning, she never smiled, and she never participated with any of us. Until one day, she and a couple of other people in our comm center attended a training. And in that training, a nutritionist and a, 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 an exercise a fitness specialist trainer showed them stretches that you could do at your console. And they went back to their shift. And because of that, because of the training they got, because of the new information they got, they decided that they were going to all stand up and stretch as a shift. And they stretched together until finally the woman who's grumpy and grouchy all the time started to smile because she hadn't stretched in 10 years. And they all did it together, so it felt like a team. And it was fun. And we were moving our bodies. And when we move our bodies, we move our blood. And we start releasing hormones. And we start feeling better. And we start feeling better about ourselves and each other. And ever since then, she shows up with a smile on her face. It's just a silly little story. which is doable and possible. So let me tell you another story. This story is a real story. This came from a dispatch supervisor. I actually had an individual whom I did not get along with. Something about my tone just didn't get across effectively. She ended up complaining and we had to have a meeting with a mediator. I was totally against this meeting because I know exactly how I am, and it wasn't going to go well. To my surprise, it went great. During the meeting, I was able to listen and understand what was really going on in her head and came to the conclusion that it had nothing to do with me. To this day, we are civil, and she feels comfortable coming to me with questions. That is an awesome story. That's a story that a dispatcher sent to me. She started out the hero. She started out with the struggles. She faced obstacles. She was always in a lousy mood. She always had a crappy attitude. She knew it. We put her through challenges. She attended my 911 Supervisor Leadership Academy for six months. She got new tools. She shifted her attitude and her mindset. Then when the challenge came along, she rose to it, did things she never thought possible and maintained the relationship with her dispatcher. That's a great story. It's a story of transformation. She told me her own story. And now she can use that story to you to tell to dispatchers, to trainees, to people under her umbrella. She fell on her sword. She realized that she was the problem. She went through transformation. And in this sense, she's the hero. She's the hero of her own story. And she can use her story to help the other heroes become themselves become bigger heroes to go through challenges and come out the other end like Luke Skywalker growing up being more convinced of their own power inside themselves all right
One more story. Here's another story. One particular night, while I was in the kitchen of my communication center, a dispatcher approached me about a problem. Long story short, once she explained the problem, it was determined that she was actually in the wrong. As I explained to her my reasoning, I started to notice a change in her. As I explained to her my reasoning, I started to notice a change in her. Tears began to well up in her eyes. She started developing that thousand yard stare and she started shutting down altogether. Recognizing this as the fear response taking over, I instituted one of the techniques given to us in a stress management class. I had her name several things in the room, had her describe their colors, textures, and smells. I then asked, do you know where you are right now? As if out of a trance, she stated, yeah, I'm in the kitchen. I responded, good, then you understand that right now, you are in no danger. I didn't pull you into the office to berate you over a mistake. You came to me with a question and we are discussing the results. Sure, it's not the answer you were hoping to get, but that is the answer. She relaxed, stated that she understood and went back to work with no further incidents. That is an awesome story. That is the story of a supervisor who used new tools, told the dispatcher a story, guided the dispatcher through her fear, through her pain, got her out the other end intact, the supervisor did not use his own fear, did not belittle her, did not berate her, did not yell at her, did not embarrass her. He said, oh, I know what's happening here. You're getting locked down in fear. So let's do a little exercise. It'll take 30 seconds, if that long. And let's guide you through that fear. All of this is stories. These are all stories. So one of the things we have to ask ourselves is what, what is it that people want? Four things that people want. Meaningfulness. People want meaning in their lives. That includes you. That includes everybody in your comm center. By the way, even if they don't know it. And by the way, even if they deny it. They themselves may not know how to articulate it, but we all want meaning, to have meaningful work, to feel like we're contributing. And here's a question for you. Do you and your comm center have a story around meaningful work? Do you have a story around saving that little girl who fell into a well? Do you have a story of reviving somebody, instructing CPR? Do you have a story that you can relate to a trainee, that you can relate in, a, in the interview to show people how powerful this profession is, to show people that they can be the hero that they're wishing to be? And if they come work with us, we will nurture the hero inside them so they can be who they really are. That's what people are dying for. People are dying to find a place where they can be themselves, their best self. Number one, meaningfulness. Number two, choice. People want choice. They want to have some kind of feeling of control or at least what, fate or destiny or or some kind of guidance over their own lives. 
if you are telling people what to do all the time, at some point they will not care what you're saying anymore. Why? Because you haven't asked them any questions. You haven't given them choices. You haven't allowed them to be part of the, to be the captain of their own lives. The reality may be they may have very few choices. So create choices for them. Find places where you wouldn't have necessarily thought about choices and give them choice. One of the examples I use in my training programs is my friend Anne, who was talking to her girlfriend. She's telling her that her son Johnny is just a pain in the neck. I said, Johnny, put on your pajamas. Johnny, put on your pajamas. Johnny, put on your pajamas. And Anne's friend said, Anne, why don't you try, Johnny, you're going to put on your pajamas first or brush your teeth first? Anne changed her story and created choice where no choice existed before. It may not be perfect. It may not work all the time. But it's going to hit Johnny's brain differently than all of those moments of his mother yelling at him, put on your pajamas, put on your pajamas. She created a new story, a mini little story. Stories don't have to be long. The third thing that people want is competence. They want to be competent. They want to be able to do the job well. They want the tools and the skills and the knowledge and the attitude to do a job well. And part of the job of a comm center, when welcoming a new person in, is to create that environment where the person can become competent. And in that process, the fourth intrinsic reward is progress. You know how this feels. You know when you tried something new and you start seeing progress, how good you feel, how proud you feel. You may go home and tell your friends, your family, guess what mommy did today? Guess what daddy did today? That's you being proud. That's normal human behavior. Here's a quick story. I was doing a program at a sheriff's academy, a leadership program, seven modules long. One of the modules was on public speaking. And the exercise was, come to the front of the room, it was a sheriff's deputies, come to the front of the room and pretend that your colleagues, your sheriff deputy colleagues are high school students. And your job is to convince them to come work for the sheriff's office. And the person, the first person gets up and says, fast cars and carry a gun and does that kind of thing for three minutes. And the second person gets up and says, insurance and benefits and good salary, and does that for three minutes. There's nothing in inherently human in that. There's nothing moving in those stories. That is not a story that a hero can latch on to. That is not a story that's going to move somebody. But the third person got up. And the first sentence out of his mouth was, my mother was killed by a drunk driver when I was 19 years old. I became a sheriff's deputy to make sure that no other 19-year-old has to go through that. Two-sentence story. He continued his story, another few sentences, and by the fourth, fifth sentence, his hardened, cynical law enforcement colleagues were crying. Were crying. That's power. That's influence. If you want to be influential, tell your trainees, tell your colleagues, tell the 20-year-old uh, the 20 year veteran who hasn't smiled in 20 years, tell them a story. Because stories have been running the world for countless ages. Stories generate billions of dollars in revenue in Hollywood, 
What does that mean? It means that they must work. Why does Hollywood have focus groups to screen a movie? And if that focus group doesn't like the end, the film production company may go back and reshoot the ending. Why? Because they understand the power of story. Are you using that power? You can use that power of story in your um, publicity, your job announcements, your job descriptions. Just imagine if you have the usual, you may have to get HR on board for this, but if you have the usual job description, oh my God, there's nothing inspiring in most job descriptions. But if you can create language, if you can create story of what that job really is, as part of your job, you will answer the phone for 18 hours. I already don't want that job. As part of your job, you are going to save lives. Your job is not to answer phones and dispatch police. It's just what you do, but that's not the meaning of your job. Your job is to have an impact on the community. Your job is saving lives. That's your job. Your job is keeping families together. Your job is making sure little girls don't lose their parents. Your job is to make sure that little boys don't lose their grandparents. Whatever the story is. Answering the phone is not your job. It's just what you do. It's the what and it's the how, but it's not the why. And the why is what your job is really about. And you need stories to convey to each other and to your applicants and to your trainees that they are part of something bigger. That they are part of something meaningful. And at the end of their lives, they can go out of this world with the feeling, with the knowledge, with the certainty that they were part of something huge. Even if the outside world doesn't acknowledge it, everybody in that comm center knows it. And they keep supporting each other with it. So... What I want to do for the remainder of our time is just tell you about a comm center. If you've seen me speak before, I've talked about these guys before. And I promise in 2023, I'll be talking about other comm centers. But these guys I talk about very often. Sugarland, Texas, southwest of Houston, has an awesome comm center. Their comm center is filled with stories. It's filled with stories. One of the stories is this spotlight employee. When I took this photo, I took this photo about maybe five years ago. I recently asked somebody there, oh, you stopped doing that, right? And like it's a gimmick. Like it's, it's, run its course. And they said, no, we still do it. We spotlight our employees. That employee is telling their story. That hero is telling their story. And one of the advantages that this provides is everybody else knows that person. They get to know each other. Why is that important? Because now we can help each other when the obstacles come up. We understand we're all part of one team. We understand that all of us have fears. We understand that each one of us is a hero. We understand that we're going to each face obstacles. And we work with each other to get through those obstacles. 
you look along the ceiling there, the top of the wall, and they have this thing called champs, champion employees, honest and open communications, accountability, multicultural, people first. That's their story. They believe they're champs. They believe they're heroes. They treat each other like champs. They treat each other like heroes. And it's written all over the place. So they have this, champs. Right? Champion employees. What does it mean to be a champion employee? What does honest and open communication look like? They talk to each other in healthy ways. They have requirements, they have framework, they have guiding principles for how to talk with each other. They hold each other accountable. It's a multicultural environment. It's people first and superior service. You think about people first, what does that mean in real life? It means you have to have a certain kind of attitude. If you believe in superior service, what does that mean in terms of how you do things, how you answer the phone, how you talk to each other? It's not just superior service to the outside world. It's superior service with each other. Because they understand, consciously or not, that everybody in that comm center is on a journey. They also understand whether they articulate it in these words or not, they understand that their callers are on a journey. And the journey, as a rule, everyone is at different places. So we don't make fun of other people because they are not as far along in the journey as I am. They're not as far along as the journey as we would expect them to be. Whatever, we just give them help. We tell them stories about their greatness. We tell them stories about the greatness of other people who were in their position previously. We convince them of what's possible and that they can do it. And on another wall is their mission, vision, whatever you want to call it. I don't even care anymore. It's their purpose. Working together as a team and a family, serving others as we would our own. Do you know what I see in that phrase? I see the word together everywhere. Working together as a team, which is a group of people that work together, and a family, which is a group of people that care about each other together, serving others so that we can be together, we're part of that fabric of society, as we would our own, the people around us, together. Super powerful. That's an awesome story. They have framework, they have guiding principles, they have a way to identify and welcome in new people to make them part of the family, to become part of the legacy of the Sugarland Comm Center. And then they show it all the time. They've got the employee spotlight. They've got the words across the ceiling. They've got the mission statement on the wall. They've got lockers where each person individually is telling their story, is saying, I'm a hero, and here's the reason why I'm a hero. Here are my kids, and here's us having fun, and here's us celebrating, and here's us being together. And here's celebration, and we celebrate each other. 
This is Amy and Julie celebrating their 10 years at Sugar Land. And they celebrate like crazy. Now I'm sorry I didn't bring more photos, but they celebrate birthdays like crazy. This is Brandon. They celebrated with this. They made a large color printouts of his head and hung it from the ceiling. They hung his the quotes that he's known for from the ceiling. They had all kinds of things. Big cake. They had all kinds of amazing things to celebrate each other. Why? Because they understand the power of storytelling. It's not a casual thing to be taken lightly because we're using it in our marketing. We're using it in our education. We're taking our content, our history, our experience, mixing it with some creativity, using it as part of our marketing, sharing with the world our emotion, because that's where it triggers in the emotional centers of our brain. We have to trigger the emotion. We have to trigger positive emotion to expect somebody to want to work in our place. Do you have what I call interviewing by death squad? Right? It's like a firing squad. We have three, four, five people sitting at a table staring down this one poor applicant, interviewee. That person is either lying or dancing or sweating or wondering what story am I supposed to tell and they're nervous. How in the world am I going to find out who that person is under those conditions? So comm centers are starting to use other elements, like two people take the trainee, take the applicant, the interviewee out to Starbucks or Panera Bread or whatever, and they go have lunch or a cup of coffee, and they just start chatting. Why? Because I'm looking for attitude. I'm looking for quirkiness. I'm watching how the applicant is talking to the waiter. Somebody told me a story. They said, we took an applicant out to lunch. And when that lunch came, the applicant picked up the salt and just sprayed salt all all over the meal without having tried it. And he said to me, if this person is getting his lunch and automatically putting salt on it, salt, pepper, whatever. What does that tell me? It may tell me that they already have their habits, they have their ways, they didn't even try. Is that something that's going to convert onto the floor as somebody who doesn't like new ways, as somebody who's too stuck in their ways? We're looking for attitude. We find attitude by telling stories, and we watch the reactions to the stories. And then we ask the hero, the applicant, the interviewee for their stories. And we watch what kinds of stories they choose to tell. And we listen for how they handle their struggles and obstacles in the past. Is this somebody who's relatively sure of themselves? Or is this somebody who's too mousy and too introverted and too whatever for the collection of people that we already have in our center because we're looking for somebody to fit into our family. We're looking for somebody who will fit the guiding principles of our family. And the way we convey that to them is by telling stories. We tell them the story of our family. Engage if we think that person's going to fit with our group and we check their sense of humor and we check their amount of pride, you know, their their sense of pride, we check their accomplishment. What is their attitude about difficult things? Of course, this is not the be all end all. There's so many factors, 
But the storytelling one is a powerful one that's been used since the beginning of time. And the only question I have is, why aren't comm centers using stories more actively, more forcefully to attract the kind of people that they want into their comm center? The power of storytelling is not a fluke. So 911 has to find a way to tap into those, into that power, to use it it, to your purposes, to leverage it, to attract the right people, to process, to onboard, to hire the right people, and to move them into the story of your comm center. Does your story have a comm center? Does everybody on the floor know what it is? If you're not living by the same story, how are you moving forward? If you're not living by the same values that are illustrated by the story, how are you moving forward? It doesn't mean that you're without obstacles. It doesn't mean that you're without, you know, uh, secondary stories or difficulties or people that don't cooperate or collaborate or whatever. Yeah, that's all part of human life. But you need a framework. And the framework of values and guiding principles that are supported by and encapsulated by a powerful story that moves people. That's the task. Because people want to join groups that are fun, meaningful, have choice. They can see how they themselves can advance, progress, and be competent. People stay at places where they feel valued and loved. Yes, loved. Do you love your staff? Do you love your colleagues? Do you have a story that's so powerful that people don't want to leave because they want to be part of that story? That's it for me. Uh, I just want to mention this in passing. As many of you know, the 360 Dispatcher runs a week-long program at the Mayan Ranch in Bandera, Texas, outside San Antonio. Our March program in 2023 is sold out. Our September program is half sold out. You have people like Ricardo Martinez, our host, uh, who speaks there, Sarah Weston from 911 Wonder Women, uh, Nathan Lee from Denise Amber Lee, Halcyon Frank from Denise Amber Lee, Hank Hunt from uh, Carrie Hunt Foundation. They're all rotating uh, faculty at this program. Just wanted to let you know about that. You are welcome to reach out anytime you'd like. Thank you for having me. It was a pleasure spending time, and we'll see you down the road. Take care.